Hi, it's Oscar. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to send attachment files in ServiceNow throughout web service. The requirement is simple. We have an end user that submits a request in ServiceNow instance, in this case, an incident. This incident is replicated in a third party ITSM system. It could be another ServiceNow instance. Then this end user may want to attach files in the ticket to provide more detailed information for the engineer. Simple. We would like to send this file over to the third party system via web service. When using web services, we can only send text. So how can we achieve this? To send files via web service is quite simple. When the user attaches a file in the ticket, we'll have to use base64 to encode the file. As a result, we get a large string of text using ASCII characters. Then we can use the web service as a mechanism to transport the encoded string to the third party ITSM system. Once received, we can decode a string and obtain a copy of the original file attached by the end user at this end. To implement this in ServiceNow, I'm going to use two instances. The first instance is running Fuji. This will be my third party ITSM system. In order to receive attachments, I need to create an inbound web service in Perset. I have one already created named Incident Attachment WS. As you can see, it has five fields. Two of them are for the attachment. Attachment 1 is going to have the encoded string of the file. That's why it has a length of 4,000 characters. Attachment 1 name is going to have the name of the file and the length is 100 characters. The rest of the fields are going to be used for the creation of the incident. We also need a transfer map. We can do as usual, mapping the source fields with the target fields. But in order to decode the base64 string, we're going to need a transfer script. This transfer script needs to run after the incident record has been created in the table. The content of the script is as follows. We have to use the glide string util API, which contains a base64 decode as bytes function. This function takes the encoded string of the file and creates the byte stream to write the attachment in the incident. As you can see, we're using write function from the attachment API. The first parameter is the table, then the new sysid of the ticket, in this case the incident, the name of the file, the file type, and last, the byte stream of the decoded base64 string. That's all what the third party system requires to do in order to receive an attachment. The second instance is run in Geneva. This will be the source system. We need to consume the third party system inbound web service. It is required to create an outbound SOAP message. I have one already created named Incident Attachment WS Consumer. This SOAP message has the whistle configured from the third party system and all SOAP messages functions have been loaded. We're going to use insert function in particular. In the envelop, I pre-configured the variables for each element of the payload. You can use how to generate variables in order to populate variables substitutions tab. With the color, description, and short description populated with the test values, we can quickly run a test. Before that, we need to populate attachment one variable with base64 encoded string. On the internet, you can find many websites who can encode any file online using base64. I'm going to use this site to encode a cartoon picture of myself. I'm going to choose the picture file, click open, and immediately I'll get my base64 encoded version of the image. I select and copy all the string. Then I click on the test value for attachment one variable and paste the encoded string. Note that attachment one is already populated with the name of the file. Then I hit test and you can see how the variables were substituted with the test values. We have 200 code that the transaction was received. So let's take a look at the third party system. I refresh the incidents and I can see that a new incident was created. 
If we open the incident record, we can see that the attachment was successfully transferred. Let me get the attachment to open it. There we have the image. In a real case scenario, an end user will create an incident ticket and then attach a file. There has to be a trigger mechanism to eVound the ticket to the third-party ITSM system, including the file attached. For the sake of the demonstration, I created a UI action in the form called eBound Ticket. The script has three parts. First, assuming there is only one file attached in the ticket, we'll have to query attachment table to get the file. If attachment exists, the second step is to get an input stream of the attachment, get the byte array, and finally encode the file using GlideBase64. The third step is to make the SOAP call to eBound the ticket by fulfilling the parameter variables including the Base64 encoded string of the file. In this example, the end user created an incident and the ticket details document was attached to this record. By clicking the eBound Ticket button, we'll send the ticket and the file attached. If we take a look at the third-party ITSM system, we can see that the incident was created and it contains the document attached. Thanks for watching this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments below.